Hey everyone and welcome to another video of gtmtraining.com with me Julian and today we want to talk about the custom HTML tag. Before we get started, as always, these little videos are brought to you by my Udemy course on Google Tag Manager. You can find out more about it at gtmtraining.com slash YouTube where you also get a little bit of a discount for this course. Now let's dive into our today's topic, which is custom HTML tags. And once we log into our Google Tag Manager account, we can see the tag option of custom HTML tags once we open up a new tag down here in the section under choose your tags. Now important to know is that these here are all tag templates. So and tag templates can be really, really useful. For example, with Google Analytics, Once we go through here, we have a lot of different settings to customize our Google Analytics installation. So all these fields here that normally would take further customization of the Google Analytics code are available as fields here and really easy to customize and you can even input variables here. So tag templates are a great, great advantage within Google Tag Manager, especially because you are delegating a lot of the responsibility on the code basis to the tag management tool. So even if the Google Analytics code gets updated, the tag management tool would need to take care of the code changes and just import your configuration. So there's a lot of responsibility on the tag management tool now, and you don't have to take care of any updates that might go along when a tag gets updated. So this is really good and I would encourage anyone if there's a tag template to use it. Now for the cases that we don't have a tag template, we can use the custom HTML tag or the custom image tag. Now the custom HTML tag says what it does. It deploys custom HTML code to your page. The custom image tag, if the tag that you wanna deploy is purely image based, then use the custom image tag. And I would predict that there are many more tag templates coming along. We have here the suggest a tag button. So if enough people suggest a tag, then the Google Tag Manager team will probably build in a template for this. Now, one obvious one that I don't see here, which is widely used is the Facebook tag. So let's take that as an example to deploy as a custom HTML tag. Click here on custom HTML and then we can choose the trigger since I will deploy a custom audience tag, which is a retargeting tag basically. We can go with all pages, click continue. And then it comes to the tag name, which I usually take the tag name. Then the method that I used, the tag template that I used, and the scope. We have this deployed on all pages. And then you have here a HTML screen. Now this might look a little bit different to what you see on your screen because I have a custom plugin installed, which is this code editor by 55. And you can download it in the Chrome App Store and it will give you the capability to have code highlighting directly in your browser. And it's not just a text field here. So this is really useful. And if you're working a lot with custom HTML, I would encourage you to install that. Now this window is the field where you can input your custom HTML and it's really HTML. So if we put in here H1 and uh, hello, we obviously need to also close this tag again. All right, we can create this tag just for testing sake and see if it deploys correctly. Let's go to our test page, reload this page. And we see down here that we have a new HTML tag and it's um, H1 hello and you can really deploy HTML through this tag. 
I wouldn't encourage you to really do that because you might know that Google Tag Manager works asynchronously, which means we don't know when our tag gets deployed. And here it's beneath the page. So you could use some kind of JavaScript to inject it at the right place here, but Google Tag Manager isn't really built for that. And I wouldn't encourage you to fix a crappy website but rather go into the code basis of the website and fix it there and not through, do it through Google Tag Manager. But it's definitely possible. Now, we know that the HTML tag works. Let's go jump back into our Facebook tag. And obviously here we would need to input our Facebook tag. I got a window open here with my custom audience Facebook tag and I'll just paste it in, copy and paste it into our code editor. Now very important, this is still HTML so you need an open script tag and a closing script tag and we even have here a no script tag involved. And all we have to do now is save this tag, it will be deployed on all the pages so we can publish it, preview it obviously first, let's reload our page and our Facebook audience tag has fired. So now Facebook should be receiving data, do a little bit of quality control, you could choose to install the Facebook pixel checker which is also available in the app store. And once you're confident to that this pixel is working correctly, you can go ahead and publish this as a version and then it will be deployed to all the users out there. Now, one quick tip that you can use in custom H HTML tags, if you have dynamic values, for example, this pixel ID that you might want to store in a variable, you can always call this variable by typing in these curly brackets, two curly brackets, and then the variable name. And this would automatically input the variable value. So you'll be able to use variables within custom HTML tag, which is really useful once you have, for example, a conversion tracking script that you want to de deploy and transfer the order amount to that tracking script. So last but not least, when would you use that custom HTML tag if there's no tag template available, I would use it. The common use cases are really Facebook conversion tracking. If you have any display advertising network that is not under these tag templates, you'll be able to do that through custom HTML tag. I would avoid it if there is a template available. But nonetheless, I use this tag extensively if I deploy any custom JavaScript onto the page. So it maybe reads values from the page that I can then put into the data layer and use for custom variables. So my common use cases are really a custom listener, so to say. You could also deploy a data layer push so you have certain values available coupled with certain rules in the data layer and then transfer them to variables. So that would be also possible. But most commonly probably are tags that don't have a tag template and I need to deploy through the custom HTML tag. All right, so that's it with this week's lesson on Google Tag Manager, the custom HTML tag. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. There will be more videos coming out each week. Give us a thumbs up, or if you have questions, of course, please comment under this video. I'm Julian, till next time. So we can adjust the bounce rate. So to get that installed with Google Tag Manager, it will actually fire an event after 10 seconds, which will signalize to Google Analytics that the user has been active on that page. So it's interaction that fires off to Google Analytics and will tell Google Analytics that this Google Tag Manager. And one variable that every page view has in Google Tag Manager 
is the referrer. And every page view has this referrer. It just shows in where the user just came from. Now we can use this referrer to actually identify the landing page because the referrer probably will show an external site that you just came from in order to access this site.